So today's video was all about burnout. You are not a machine. I want you to know that you're not meant to just like work, 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 work yourself into the ground. That's just not the point. Um, but beyond that, burnout really is a really, a really big problem for women in business in particular. And I want to make sure that you have the strategies and the tools that you need uh, to address that early, often, and as necessary as possible, because not only is it going to affect your business, but it's going to affect your health and your life Two, um, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I want to make sure that you are armed with everything that you need to make your business as successful as possible. My name is Olivia and I'm the founder here at Levy Rev. We're a consultancy that specializes in strategic planning, finance, project management, overall just giving black and brown women the tools they need to build their dreams. I think the biggest issue is that burnout is kind of normalized in Western culture in particular, definitely. But in general, in this day and age, I think burnout and just overwork is so glamorized and normal, particularly if you are starting a business, if you're a founder, if you are trying to get VC funding, it's something that is just kind of so normalized and it should absolutely not be. So what exactly is burnout? Burnout is defined as a form of exhaustion that results from prolonged periods of emotional, physical, and mental stress. Think overwhelm, emotionally drained, and chronic stress. I know for me, burnout can show up as just severe, severe procrastination. Like my body is literally telling me like, live, stop, you need a nap, you need to shut down. And I think especially being in cities like New York and Hong Kong, there is absolutely a culture of keep going, push through, you can do it. Like that just like push, push, push energy is very, very prevalent. And, and it's just not normal. It's not okay to work yourself into the ground. I know for me, one of my biggest motivations was starting my own business, working, wanting to work for myself, was just having the flexibility to live the life of my dreams. I knew that I wanted to be between New York and France. I knew that I wanted to travel to Asia regularly. I knew that I wanted to be able to take time off to go see my friends and family. And I knew that I needed to create a career that reflected that, that allowed me to do that, that gave me the chance to have the life that I wanted. It defeats the entire purpose of me doing all this work, putting, like laying the foundation for this type of life if I am too tired, sick, stressed to even enjoy it. I think really remembering that and putting that into the foundation of how you approach work, particularly if you work for yourself, even if you don't work for yourself or you just have a goal that you're trying to reach or you're trying to just get better balance in your career in general. One of the key points about being strategic is just thinking about things before they happen. It's really important to set yourself up for success and one of the ways to be strategic about avoiding burnout is giving yourself steady breaks and thinking about it in the beginning while you're laying the foundation for your business, for your career, for whatever transformative thing you're trying to do. That allows you to prevent being stressed from even entering your business model. Obviously stress is, is a natural part of life that is part of being human, but being able to avoid it to the point where it has a negative impact on your health, your livelihood is the goal. So what are some of the negative impacts that, um, burnout can have on your health. Chronic stress is one, cardiovascular disease, having a weakened immune system, anxiety, depression, the list goes on and on. And I actually think that that's probably even worse today because of, you know, just the past few years of global unrest and all that the world has gone through and continues to go through. Honestly, it's just a very, it's already just like baseline, naturally stressful, the way that the world, the society is kind of set up today. Add on to that another layer, working for your strong self and the stress that comes with that. You can see why burnout is so prevalent. So what are the impacts for your business? So beyond health, how can being burnt out affect your business? Burnout can lead to decreased productivity, performance, lack of creativity, impairment of cognitive function, and overall just decrease your decision-making ability. I really can't overstate the impact of like burnout and how much of a negative impact it can have on your business. I'll give you a real life business example um, that I've experienced from burnout this year even. So after launching La Rev, I was so excited. I, I was starting to pick up new clients. I wanted to do all of these new things. I was excited about building out content for the YouTube channel and doing all of these things. And I looked up and it was June and I was exhausted. Um, I'm getting all this like cramping in my arm. I'm tired. I'm like, what is going on? And I realized that it's burnout. And I realized that it was burnout because there was a client that I absolutely wanted to work with. I loved the work that she was doing, the mission, the values, the product, everything. And I literally had to say no because I didn't have enough energy to give my all to the project. 
I knew what the timelines were, I knew that it was the perfect La Vira client, but I also knew that I wasn't at my best. That was absolutely heartbreaking. It was horrible. I was so mad at myself, I think, because I was like, I know better than this. Like, I think that's actually probably one of the downsides of me being in New York is that I pick up the New York tendencies more than when I'm living in Hong Kong or Paris or someplace else where I can be a little bit more grounded. But I was so annoyed at myself because it was like, I know better than this. Like, I know not to like overwork myself. I can't pour from an empty cup. And I didn't even listen to that myself and had to end up not taking on a client who I know I absolutely would have loved to have taken on and would have been an incredible project, but I didn't have the energy. That is a very real impact on my business. Like that's not fun. But I think it's really important to hear things like that because I think sometimes it can be seen as, oh, you're being soft or like, no, team no sleep, push through, like I'm a girl boss. Like, no, like you need rest, you need sleep, you need to be at your best so that you can give your best to your clients, to your life, to the people that you love, you know? So, and actually what sparked this beyond me having to say no to a client that I know I would have loved was I had a conversation with one of my good friends. She's the founder um, of an incredible business and is doing amazing things and she had to take time off. And she was talking to her doctor who was like, I know a lot of young women don't want to hear this, but like the truth is that burnout is and stress is like a silent killer. Like, yeah, you can work yourself into the ground now, but you will, really really significantly impact your quality of life later if you don't address it now i'm saying that not because you know i think i'm perfect and i've got it right absolutely not i'm <laughs> absolutely in need of vacation and we'll be on vacation for the next two weeks with no cell phone i'm so excited um but i really want you all to hear it early and often and build it into your strategies to take care of yourself to not let burnout be built into your business so what are the strategies? I told you all the horrible sides of burnout. What can you do now in your own business, in your own life, realistically, to, to fight this, to combat this, to make sure that you have the tools that you need? First and foremost, I would say just cultivate a positive work environment. I know that sounds so cliche, but it truly is like at the root of everything. You really need to set your life and your business up in a way that works for you, that is positive for you. Some examples of this could be, if you know that you're not a morning person, don't schedule meetings in the morning. Start your day or you only take meetings, like client meetings after 10 a.m., after 11 a.m. I know multiple people who do this and it's absolutely incredible. Life-changing even. I am a morning person, so I don't mind that, but I know that, for example, if you just pivot your day where you know you're not taking like one-on-one -on -one calls or you're not gonna be available before 10 a.m., that gives you that extra time that, okay, you're not a morning person. Give yourself space and time to wake up. Be gentle with yourself. Ease into your day. Again, that's really specific to those of you who have businesses, but it's something to think about how you can adjust and tweak those little things because they really are the big things. At the end of the day, especially when you have your own business, it truly is a marathon, not a sprint. You have to think little by little, day by day, incrementally, what can I do to help reach my goal? That's what it feels like, at least to me, with having my own business, with making progress, with posting consistently on YouTube. Um, little by little, what you can do. And I know for me, like I have a tea practice. Like I have tea every morning, I sit, I pray, I meditate, like I have tea. Love that. So find what works for you to cultivate an env a positive environment for work, a positive way to wake up in the day. Next would be open communication. I, and honestly, over communication. You are not a machine. You are not meant to be a machine. You are not meant to always be perfect, to always be on, to always be producing. And I think that is so prevalent in the Western world in general. Um, no, I think that's prevalent everywhere. I shouldn't even just say the Western world. I know that it hits me more in the Western world because I grew up here, but I didn't feel that as much in other parts of the world. But you're not a machine. It's okay to have boundaries with work. And it's actually really great to have boundaries with work. And a really great example of this would be if you know that you're not feeling up for a meeting, sending a message to your client or whoever you're meant to meet with and say, hey, today's not gonna work. Is it okay if we reschedule to tomorrow? This is something that I spoke to my best friend about all the time because she also started her, launched her own PR firm, Meraki PR. I will leave a link to them in the description box. But we used to always be like, oh my gosh, this client wants me at this time or they want to meet at this time. And we would always be going back and forth. And I remember I told her one time, like, just ask them that you can like not meet at 4 p.m. Like most people that you meet with will be understanding. You have a life, you have a husband, you have things to do, you have family, kids, all these things. Like it doesn't make sense to act like 
those things don't exist when they do. Communicate, over communicate, state those things early and often. If a time doesn't work for you because it conflicts with family time, say that. Most people will understand and I think empathy really is a huge thing that has to be built into your business. You have to have the human aspect into your business. One of the things that I'm most proud about with Live Rev is that I really have built a business that's tailored to women. Women of any age, any color, any like wherever they're at in life, it doesn't matter. That includes all women, includes trans women. I think it's really important to, to say that. So to meet women where they're at. A lot of the women that I've worked with have families, they have kids, they have partners, they have lives, they have medical practices, they have businesses, jobs, I, like they have things to do. You can't always just say like, this is the one way we're gonna do it, it's super rigid, this is the way we're doing business. Like that just doesn't work. And that's really one of the proudest things that I think I've built over the last year is just a business model that meets women where they're at for the needs that they want. It's okay if you're a working mom, that there's a way to work around that. It is okay if you like to go on hikes and like a certain block of time is your hiking time. Cool. We can work around that. And I make sure to over, over communicate that no matter who I'm working with. Um, just so that it's super, super clear. So I think if you take nothing else from this video, over communicate, over communicate your boundaries, over communicate what works for you, over communicate if you're feeling off. Most people will understand. And to be completely honest, the people who don't understand in business, like you don't want to work with them anyway. Like let them just self select out because you don't want to work with anybody who doesn't respect your boundaries or doesn't respect that you aren't at a hundred percent. And obviously things happen, like people have off days, that's normal. But in general, um, somebody who won't understand that like you need a break and aren't a machine and need like a moment to regroup before you have a meeting, not somebody you want anyway. And last but not least, to so just to keep perspective, I think it's really, really important, especially when you are in business to just stop and zoom out. Like go for a walk, <laughs> touch grass. <laughs> I know that that's like a funny meme, but it's, it's so true. And I, and I mean it so sincerely, like you have to zoom out and remember the big picture. I think sometimes that can be so hard as a founder because you're so in the weeds, you're doing everything. You're the comms person, the social media person, the, you know, the partner, the CEO, the CFO, like everything is all at once. So I think it can be really easy if you are starting your own business, if you're in your own business to get caught up in the weeds, to not zoom out, to keep perspective, to, you know, see why you're doing all of this. So I think keeping that perspective is really, really important. And that can look like different things for different people. So I know for me, I'm trying to get better about going for walks in the park and cooking dinner. Cause that's something that I, I love cooking. So trying to just do little things like that to remember like, oh yeah, like I am a person, <laughs> I am not a machine. I am not just, you know, a business owner building something, you know? So I think keeping that perspective is so, so important. And just surrounding yourself with supportive people who get it. I'm really thankful for the community that I've built around me, the women in my life, the people in my life who just pour into me and love me and help me to see that perspective. So keeping that perspective, but just know that you also don't have to do it alone um, if you build the right type of people around you. So that is the video. I hope you kind of got a little bit more perspective on how burnout can be detrimental, not only to your health, but to your business and your bottom line as well. And I hope these strategies were helpful in just giving you a perspective on how to set up your business or your project or whatever you're doing in a way that works for you. Um, I don't want you to have to pour from an empty cup. It's not sustainable. It's not healthy. And um, you and your business deserve better. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about La Vie Rev, what I do, work with me on a consulting basis, uh, you can head to our website. All of the links will be in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.